Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to finish off building the ultimate DIY solar tank battery backup. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Deeds. So probably about four or five years ago now, I put some solar panels on the side of my deck, hooked up to some really big deep cycle batteries. And all this time, it's really only been powering my outside landscape lights. This was a project I did a few years back just to kind of learn more about solar and play with it. Now, before I even had the tank up here, I had intentions of putting some lights in the roof that were all running off kind of like the timers for the solar. It'd be kind of like a nightlight. But now that I actually have a tank here, uh, I figured why don't I tap into that for my battery backup? So that's what we're gonna do today. The panels themselves are four 100 watt panels. Um, these are ones I ordered off AliExpress a while ago. I did pick up some actual solar channels just to bolt them down. And the brackets are just ones I made myself and welded up to mount everything. Now on the other side of the wall, I got two different charge controllers. So one is a 30 amp one and one's a 10 amp one or 20 amp, I believe. And I have three panels going to one and one to the other just to split up the load. And those come into four very large deep cycle batteries. Now these are 147 amp hour batteries. Um, I did actually get these for free. They're pulled out of a data center. So they're already three years old when I got them. So they're probably five or six years old now, but cannot complain for the price. So 147 amp hours times four because they're all in parallel, which is a lot of power. Now I ran some 12 gauge burial grade landscape wire up to the tank. Now this was actually the tricky part. Now I was up there anyways running a bunch of network cables the other day, so I figured might as well fish a power wire up there as well. So we've got this. So what we're gonna have to do to tap into the batteries is add a fuse to this as well, just for safety purposes. Then up at the tank, we're gonna connect it up to the battery backup port on all the Ecotech pumps. So that wire comes up over through the attic and all the way down through the wall to the tank. Now it was definitely the trickiest part of this whole project was getting that wire ran. But now, once it's wired up, we're gonna have an extremely large backup battery off 12 volt, which is perfect to run our return pump and our power head. So this should keep the tank going for a long time in a power outage. Now the other day I had kind of a warning that we'd have a five or six hour power outage, and I currently do have battery backups for this. But I kind of figured, you know, what's going to happen in a longer extended power outage, and that's kind of when I got the idea to really up the battery backup. Now I'm going to start by removing my current battery backup. Now this is a great system with a ton of runtime. Um, I have two 12 volt, 22 amp hour batteries, so these are in parallel, so it's 44 amp hours. So still a ton of runtime, and I'm probably actually just going to move this one over to the frag tank so I can get more runtime out of all those pumps. So if you guys haven't seen this, you want a super cheap DIY battery backup, be sure to check out that video. Okay, so I'm gonna start by removing the old connectors. That's for the charger. These two will be for my two wires. So on one side we have our positive, which I'm just gonna leave to the left. And that's so we have our negative. Now those are currently just powering the two MP60s. I also do want to power the return pump since I have so much more capacity. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I do have the battery booster cable for the L2, so I'm gonna go dig that up and we're gonna add that into this mix. So this is the Ecotech battery booster. This is for the L2 pumps, believe, at, run at 36 volts, I believe, and, or 24 volts. So this one takes a 10 to 28 volts input and outputs a 24 volt. So this is gonna give us the juice we need to run the return pump. Now I, you can see I already cut off the ends and put connectors on it. This was from a prior project on my prior tank. So I'm fairly certain the white is our, our positive. So just gonna double check. Lights up, looks good, okay. So now what I'm gonna do is merge all these wires together and put them onto a new connector. I was going to just use these little push connectors at first. I was just gonna crimp these on. If you're just a quick DIY, this would be the the quick and easy solution to get some connect together. Um, but just because I have them, I think I'm going to use these XTC connectors again, just because they're a little more robust and should be a nice solid connection. Now one of the first things we're going to do with the wires is strip it back a little bit so that we have somewhere to solder to. Now one of the other parts this is to figure out which end we're going to use our positive and negative on the other side of the cable. Um, now one side generally has writing on it. It looks like the other side has a little bit of a textured line. so. We should be able to use that. So I think I'll use the one with the writing as our positive. Now before I solder, I generally like to tin the wire and this just helps the solder flow better later. So what we do is just put a little bit of solder on it to get things started. 
Now again, if you don't have a soldering iron, not a big deal. You can still just use these crimp on type connectors instead. The trickiest part in doing this by yourself is always just getting the wires and holding everything in place in order to make that solder join. So generally one trick that I do is get it somewhere where the solder can be kind of floating in the air and I can just move my piece into it as I make that connection. Now we've got our connection soldered. We're gonna slide our heat shrink up and hit it with the heat gun just to seal that connection off. And this just kind of insulates it, prevents any type of shorting or any wires ever touching it. Now one end of our connector is done. So we got our feed wire side done. Now we got a wire into the tank side. Um, so same thing, I took our three wires for the battery backup. So we got the booster for the L2 and the two MP60. So those are all now wired or sent together. And I did slide some red heat shrink on it just so we can identify it later. If we ever need to change something, makes it nice and easy. Now when wiring anything up, you do need to consider safety. Um, so I did pick up a heavy duty kind of fuse holder. So it's a 30 amp fuse. And this is gonna go in line just before the positive to the battery. So if a wire ever got shorted out, it would pop the fuse and you don't have any risk. So always make sure you're taking into the safety side of things when you're wiring up stuff. That's so one thing you gotta watch out for. You can see the edge of the heat shrink kind of tapered in. So it got a little too warm at the edge and started to shrink a bit. Fluidity, we can still squeeze it over and get a nice good seal. So I'm just gonna start with a 10 amp fuse, which should probably do the trick. So I've got our fuse in there. Got a little hole we can check it. Yeah, it screws on the battery and we could hook it up and test it out. last we can connect our system. Now if you ever want to check the status panels too, though, just put a little switch, which will tell you the battery voltage, so 13.1, so she's definitely full, and a little USB charger, just in case you ever need to charge your phone or something. So, nice little backups. So everything is now wired up on the side of the tank. You can see I do have a power light on my battery booster, so I'm fairly confident this should work. Um, so this is the battery backup wire on each of the pumps, so let's give it a simulated test. So there's simulated power outages. All pumps are still on and running. I did hear my skimmer turn off, so that's good that I detected it. And yeah, everything in the tank's still running. I got all my pumps going, I got my return pump going, and the tank should not miss a beat. And I can hear the drain gurgling because obviously it's just not running at full speed. So I might actually adjust it so it just stays at full speed so nothing really knows the difference. But aside from that, power heads are running. I think they're at like 30 or 40%. So I might even just adjust this so everything still runs at full speed flow wise, just cause I have so much battery capacity. I mean, there's 600 amp hours or so, so they could run this tank with the flow for like weeks. So yeah, I think we'll adjust it to full, full speed on power outage and things shouldn't miss a beat. Now that was definitely on the extreme side, but we all know that's the way I like to do things. Um, so I'm fairly stoked with how confident I can be now that I, the power could be out for days and the tank is still gonna have flow and keep things alive, which is a huge relief, especially out of town or for expensive power outages. Now I also have my two 22 amp hour batteries that were previously my battery backup, which I'm gonna move over to the frag tank and probably do a similar thing. So like the return pumps, the flow, everything will just keep on going. So both tanks should be covered for quite a while, which is a nice big relief for battery backups. Now I know it's pretty extreme with the solar and the crazy big batteries. A more realistic one for most people is gonna be something like this with a couple of 22 amp hour batteries and a little charge control that you could just plug in rather than the solar. So definitely check out that video for that one. Um, that was a pretty inexpensive and pretty awesome little project as well. Hopefully inspired you guys to go big and protect your tank and your investment. All right, guys, as always, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next update.